Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today on Stamp School, we are gonna work with colored pencils and I am coloring an adorable cardinal image from our sponsor, artneco.com. They have gorgeous stamps, including the 50 state birds and flower set, which I really love. And the first thing I did was I actually just inked up the, um, the stamp right on the plate. I don't cut my stamps apart for this set because I'm afraid that I will lose one of them or not be able to tell what's what if they were all apart. And um, then I just pressed my cardstock onto the paper and I got a really nice image that way. And I think I'll leave that right there on screen. I'll put it over to this side so you can see it while we're coloring. I think that might help a little bit. And I am using an assortment of uh, Prismacolor colored pencils. You can use whatever you want. Make sure you have a handheld sharpener nearby. I did want to let you know that um, Art Neko has a special for all all of my viewers, my stamp school viewers, um, just mention the Frugal Crafter and you can save, get free shipping, or um, a percentage off your order. So make sure you check out the video description for the deals on that. You'll get the discount that is greater, which is always really nice. So we're going to start with the background, and the background is actually made with three different colors of pencil. And I'm going to start with this, kind of like a, we're going to be using um, this, uh, this is called True Blue. It's kind of like a, um, I would almost say like a, it's not quite a turquoise, it's very neutral, quite a neutral blue. I've got this really light called Deco Blue, which is kind of like a pastel blue. And then I'm going to be using some Indigo, which is really, really dark, but we're, and we're going to use that the last bit and not very much. So we're going to start by um, using our pencil kind of on its side and giving it an all over coat of this blue. I'm not using a lot of pressure. I don't want to have a lot of marks, so I am just keeping it on its side. Now if I get around an area um, that I really can't completely keep it on my side, I just kind of do little circles and that helps keep me from getting any distinct marks on my background. Now I'm working on a smooth paper. Um, when you're working on an image that's stamped that's small like this, you're better off having a smoother paper be just because um, the extra tooth that's usually an advantage when working with colored pencil because it allows you to layer more. The extra tooth is actually hard to stamp on and it's um, it's kind of hard to fill when you're when you're working kind of small like this. So it's hard to get in and, and get your details. So I recommend a smoother paper if you're doing a small or detailed stamped image and um, I actually stamped this on a hot press which means it's very smooth watercolor paper because I wasn't exactly sure how I was going to color this when I went to prepare this morning and I might sound a little different today I have moved to the my office for the remainder of the winter for most of my tutorials because my basement is unheated and it's very chilly this time of year. So there we have our um, <clears throat> just our basic flat layer. Now what I'm going to do is go over a little bit towards the top and make it a little bit darker at the top and I'm doing these uh, circular strokes so I don't have any weird lines and I am easing up on pressure as I come down. So this is kind of like layer number two. Just little, almost like more like ovals than circles. Now, since this is a stamp school episode, it is geared more towards our beginner stampers out there. Uh, if you want to watch this in double speed, go right ahead. Or if you want to skip through some of the coloring, um, be my guest. But I want to make sure that everybody can really understand um, whether you're a beginner or not. Now I'm going to take the uh, this deco blue, which is a really, really pale pastel blue, and I'm going to color over starting at the bottom and working my way up. More pressure at the bottom because it's going to really kind of blend my pencil and I also want it a little bit darker at the top so um, so I don't want to lay down quite as much of this light color up at the top. My desk might be a little shaky. This is my my small drafting table that I keep in my office upstairs. It was really great for the kids to use for homework but it is not the sturdiest thing because it's got the tippy the, the top you can tip down. It's uh, It tends to uh, want to wiggle and wobble Hopefully I'm not making anybody seasick. That's another reason I don't really want to speed it up. I'm afraid that it might wobble around too much and make you guys be a little nauseous. All right, and then I can go over one more time with this if I want to. And you can see you get a really nice um, gradiated blend here. And we're going to save the indigo for the end because I'm going to kind of use that to get like a little bit of a vignette around everything. Indigo is one of my favorite colors. In the Prismacolor line, I find that I use it a lot um, in lieu of black or remove other darkening colors because it's a great a great color to darken up other colors and to make your colors recede and it doesn't really have much of a, a wax bloom to it which is nice. Alright so I'm gonna leave that like that for now and on the bottom I'm gonna start with a light 
coat of this um, burnt ochre, which is kind of like a light brown. And here I'm just going to do side to side strokes because I'm going to layer so much on this that I'm not worried about being able to see my lines. But if you do work on the edge, you're not going to get as many lines as if you, you know, worked on the tip of the pencil, which is which is handy. Plus, when you're working on your edge in a large area like this, it keeps the tip sharp so that when you go in for detail, you don't have to stop and sharpen your pencil again. You're all ready to go, which means you don't waste as much. Now, I get a lot of um, questions about different brands, and you can honestly do this tutorial with whatever brand you have. Um, <clears throat> the two really popular brands right now, it seems like, are the Polychromos by Faber-Castell, which I do have a set of, and the Prismacolor. And the thing about Prismacolor is that they, they're wax, the leads are wax-based, they're really soft and they tend to break. And I do have a, um, a quick fix for that, although proceed with your own caution. <clears throat> Excuse me. I um if you micro if you have a, a pencil that keeps breaking on you if you put it in the microwave for about eight seconds on high uh, sometimes it'll blister if you go a little too long it blisters the paint on the outside but it will fuse the lead on the inside so that you can sharpen it now there some of the older pencils have metallic writing on it I didn't really find that to be a problem but proceed at your own risk the newer pencils don't have the metallic writing so it shouldn't be an issue but that will fuse the lead and I'll, and then you let it cool and then you can sharpen it again so so just a little um helpful helpful tip for you. Now I'm going to go in around my um, leaves here and using circular strokes I am going to add some depth. Just right around like that. I hear a big truck outside. I don't know what's going on. Probably getting an oil delivery. Just had one. Oh my gosh. Winter in Maine. Alright, now I am going to put a um, a coat on the leaves and I think I'm gonna go with this um, this olive green actually before I do that you know what I think I'm gonna do now this I, I believe these are violets but I didn't want purple on my card so I decided I would make them yellow cuz I'm kind of certain I've seen yellow violets before <laughs> but uh, if not oh, you know yellow flowers then no one's gonna send the card back cuz the flowers aren't the right color and you know if you ever um, get confused or you want something to go by you can search like the 50 state birds and flowers postage stamps online and you can find that you could pull up a picture of how um how they were how they came out i don't think the illustrations are exactly the same but you can at least see you know what the bird from the state is and what the flowers are and get a good reference reference photo that way all right my it is loud outside goodness gracious um all right, now with the olive, I'm going to just kind of give everything, all these leaves, a nice medium tone. And you can do any additional foliage that you see. I don't want to do that oak leaf. That oak leaf, I think, should... Well, maybe I'll do a really light in the oak leaf. That's going to have some gold on it. That's They're very yellow. I'm going to go up and just do all of this as well. We're building layers. We're getting some nice rich color when we're done. Even though the cardstock is pretty smooth, it will still hold quite a few um, layers of pencil. I just paused the camera and uh, investigated the noise there, cutting trees near my house. Move that over again so you can see. Um, I am going to use this lighter green, which is apple green, and I'm going to add that to the edges, the tips of my flat, my leaves here. Do that all the way around. Add a little of that golden color onto that oak leaf. And a little of the brown. Now I want to put some shadows in here and I am just going to anywhere um, I feel like a leaf is being shadowed by another one and in kind of the um, the deeper parts of the grouping of flowers and leaves that you really can't tell what's going on in there I want to kind of have that darker color in there as well and some of the um, it almost looks like uh, grasses. I want those to be a little darker too, so I'm putting those in a little bit darker. 
Now I do notice that I have a lot of areas that are uh, just that I missed so I'm going over with this apple green and I'm going fairly firmly and I'm just trying to hit pretty much everything except for the yellow flowers. Now something that people don't understand a lot when they're using colored pencils they'll, they'll write to me and say, Lindsay I can't get my colors as vivid as yours, what am I doing wrong? And um, I think a lot of it is just not applying the amount of pressure. You have to apply quite a bit of pressure to fill that tooth and if you um, have strength issues or you know your wrists are sore from overuse or um, you have some arthritis you may find it difficult to get the, um, the amount of pressure that you need in order to get those vivid colors. So if you find that you're just not getting your colors as dark as you want you know you may even try using like a little bit of baby oil or a little uh, paint thinner or maybe using a watercolor pencil instead of using a little water to blend to help get those colors vivid. So as you can see we've put, we've put quite a bit on there and I've used quite a bit of pressure to blend these so um, that's why my table's jiggling because of the pressure that I'm using. So I just want to make sure that you um, that you're aware of that if you're finding because even Crayola pencils are going to give you good results. They might just fade a little quicker than other ones but you, know, you should still be able to get a good decent result with, uh, with the different pencils that you choose. All right, so now I also want to have a little bit of green in this uh, in the ground, kind of like it might be um, mossy or something. So I'm going ahead and giving this a nice a nice layer of this green. And now I'm going to grab the um, this darker brown. This is uh, dark brown, dark brown. Truth in advertising, folks. That's what that one's called. Oh, good grief! And I am adding a shadow. I'm just doing circular strokes around the leaves here on the ground just to give it kind of a little bit of uh, a little bit of depth kind of pick it up against the uh, background there give it a little definition because we've been using a lot of the same colors I typically like I only have let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven I have twelve colors and I'm using this entire thing I'm not using the whole box I got 120 I'm not using them all but I like having the options because you know color pen you do need more when you're working with a dry media you typically need more than if you're working with a wet media just because of the uh, mixability of the colors so I always recommend that you buy the biggest set that you can afford once you decide what pencils you want to go with but you don't don't use them all in the same picture you'll use them all eventually and you'll have your favorites that you'll have to replace you know before others but you just you know you don't use them all in the same picture but you um, you probably you know you select the right pencils for each picture if that makes sense but you want to keep reusing them over and over again so that you get harmony in your picture I hope that makes sense okay with this uh, with this yellow this is a sunburst yellow uh, I'm gonna do the beak and I've already done the feet but I'm gonna keep this handy because I will I know I will need it in a minute I'm gonna go over the entire bird except for the beak with this uh, scarlet lake so yeah, go ahead and use your Crayolas or Pr Prangs that are actually a really good brand in both watercolor and in colored pencils for a student grade. You can get them right at any office supply store, I think, too. Um, the thing is, they just might fade a little sooner. And if you just love, you know, you, you love a piece of artwork that you've done with those, um, you can spray it with some fixative or some UV protectant and it will help it or you frame it or just keep it in a, in a sketchbook you know where the sun's not going to be hitting it all the time and you'll notice that it will keep it pretty well alright now I want to add some shadows so I'm going to start first with my Scarlet Lake and I'm going to do a little shadow under the wing a little under the chin now you know I'm just kind of going from memory on these cardinals you know but you can absolutely go online find a picture to go by look in your birding book like your auto if you have the Audubon bird watchers book they always have really great reference photos um, if you need colors to go by I'm doing this uh, this is crimson red and I'm adding deeper shadows here deeper colors pretty firmly you can see my table shaking right so you know I'm, I'm coloring pretty firmly here now I want to blend my colors now I have options I could use a liquid like Gamzol or baby oil uh, but if I use baby oil I'm not going to be able to stick more colors down so I don't want to do that 
Um, I could use a blender pen, but sometimes those add a lot of wax to my uh, picture, so I don't really want to do that. So what I try to do is choose like a really light color that will enhance my design. So if I go with um, with this golden color, this yellow that I've been using, and I use that to blend some of my colors, I'm actually going to get a nice rich tone while I'm at it. So that's what I'm going to do. And this looks like the, the sun's hitting that cardinal, doesn't it? So some people like to blend with white. That would kind of get everything more of an opaque pastel look. You can use a clear blender, but it does add more wax, so you will get more bloom. Or you can go with a color that is near to what you're using, but that will also accent your design. I keep pushing my finished card out of the way. My goodness, there we go. And I'm getting a little bit of brown to the beak. This is the Burnt Ochre. This is a barrel Prismacolor. I've had this one for a long time. I've probably had this one for like 30 years. I have some really short ones in my box that were from long, long ago when I was a wee lass. I don't know where the Scottish accent came from. All right, and now for the final touch on this. Well, a couple things. I want to use this cream. The yellow is a little, a little much, so I'm going to go in and tone down my yellow with this cream. Again, lots of pressure because I'm kind of using it to blend. And then I'm going to go in the tips of my leaves and add some of that cream. And that's going to um, cool down the yellow that I, the yellow of the green there and help it look a little bit more Christmassy or wintry, I should say, because these, I mean, I don't know what state bird, somebody can leave me, let me know in the comments what state bird and flower violets and a cardinal would be. And it might not be a cardinal, it might be a blue jay. I just, it looks too round to be a blue jay to me, so I really think it's a cardinal. Uh, but no matter, I'm coloring it like a cardinal. There's probably some, you know, bird purist out there that'll, you know, leave me a nasty comment, but I mean it. My artwork comes from love. It always comes from love. Even if I get something wrong, I'm doing my best. <laughs> and because um, you know what? If you have a Blue Jay stamp and you want to make a cardinal card, use your Blue Jay stamp. You don't need to run out and buy every last stamp that, you know, possibility. Make do with what you have. I am going to go and add kind of a frame. I'm going to give this a little depth, almost like a, I'm going to go give the color a little bit darker in the corners and on the edges. Kind of uh, make it look a little old timey. So I have more pressure in towards the edge and I'm really going light as I work my way out. So you see that corner versus that corner. All right, so just doing little circles. You just don't want it harsh. You want it to be fairly, um, fairly blended. And indigo is great because you add it to like an orangey brown and it looks black. You add it over, um, you know, an orangey red. It's going to darken it without making it look too purple. It's just such a great, great color. Um, and this is the color I use most often. This is this blue indigo Prismacolor. I use it a lot with terracotta. That is like a reddish brownish color. Makes really great shadows. Makes great rust colors. And I'm just adding a little bit more shadowing around with it. Any place you feel like it needs a little more definition, you can go right ahead and add it with the indigo. And um, there we have our image. So to trim it out, since I mentioned I'm working upstairs, I am going to use my regular scissors. In fact, I'll zoom out a little bit for the card making process. There we go, and I'll set that right. We'll set that right there for now. So what I'm going to do is just trim this out with my scissors. You could use a paper trimmer if you had one handy. That would be you get a straighter line that way. You make do, right? You make do when you're not crafting in your normal space. You get what you get and you don't have a fit, is what you do. I've run up and down the stairs, like, I'm telling you, working upstairs is going to be great for my waistline. I've run up and down stairs about 25 times today, getting stuff that, that I forgot to bring up in the first place. <laughs> That's one way for me to get some exercise. All right, I'm going to mount this on this uh, pattern paper here. And that's from Oriental Trading, if you're curious. It was just like, I, I like those mat stacks, and you can get them from pretty much any paper manufacturer. They'll make like um, 
four by six or usually it's like four and a quarter by six and a quarter so it's meant for like mounting uh, on scrapbooking like your photos but they are perfect for card making I just really really like them all right so now I'm going to use a little bit of this vintage paper now when you tear your paper if you tear if you tear what's going away from you is going to have the white deckle and what's coming towards you is going to not have the white deckle so I want this to be um, I want the bottom part to be deckled so I'm going to tear that I'm going to tear that away from me so I will get this really cool uh, white edge on the area of the paper I'm going to use on my card. Alright, and I'm also going to want to add some ribbon to that. So I'm going to put that right like that and I'm just going to cut it so I have a little to wrap around the back. All right, so let me attach this now because I tried to, when I did the card, I actually kind of built it a little backwards and it was kind of a pain. So I'm going to show you how to do it the right way. How about that? I'm going to add my adhesive here. Um, if I sound a little mellow, it's probably because I'm in a heated room. And um, this is actually, I have I took a few days off during the holidays, during Thanksgiving. And I just kind of, I haven't, haven't been filming. Everything that's been on my channel has been stuff I've recorded previously, like the week before. So I'm just kind of like getting back in the swing of things here. All right, now I want to put this, um, some of the sequin trim on. And it's really difficult to glue. So what I think I'm going to try doing is wrapping it around to the back and taping it. And the other thing you have to be, that I have to be concerned with here is that if I cut it, I, my sequins are going to come off. So I'm going to get a piece of tape and tape that before I cut it. So I got my tape here and I want to make sure I have enough room to wrap it around. So I'm just going to put this tape on there and fold it over, squish it down good. And then I'll cut through the tape and that way, um, it, my sequins aren't going to fall off my spool. See, they'll stay. This is from the Dollar Tree, actually. It's really pretty. Um, and also, it's not going to, um, it's not going to unravel and I'm not going to drip sequins off my card. So I want to do this right at the bottom edge, I think. And I'm just going to tape this to the back. This is a little awkward. I tried using this glue. I've been using this for everything, but I just wasn't, it was absorbed. I was gluing that over a ribbon and it was just absorbing on the ribbon and it was not, um, it was not working out very well. So I'm going to just try to eyeball it there and just pull it to the back to secure it. I don't think I really need to glue it on the front. I think as long as I have it stuck into some adhesive on the back, it'll be all set. And I think I'm definitely going to need something oh, securing those sequins because they are just not wanting to behave now. You know what though? I think since I'm right on the paper, I think I will try that uh, that glue since since I'm not gluing it right to the ribbon, I'm kind of I think I can glue it under the ribbon. I think I will try that glue. I'll put that right under there. It was just absorbing into the ribbon the last time I tried it, but now that we're right on the paper, I think we'll be all set. Hopefully. All right, so there is that part. Now we're going to adhere this kind of like that, I think. Why not give it a little bit of this adhesive? I don't have my pink, my big pink gun upstairs yet because I've been working on a couple other projects. Do I want that like that on this one? Hmm, I guess I like that. It's kind of pretty. Okay, and I'm just going to stick down a couple embellishments and we are done. Um, I do like this, any sort of like fine tip applicator for, um, for these little die cuts. I've had this little corner die cut forever. It's really elegant though and I just cut it out of some uh, gold paper, some foiled paper because it's such a popular trend right now. I bought a pack. I also bought a pack of that at Michael's because um, because they had these huge packs for like five bucks. So I got gold and silver. Oh, actually, I got it. And the packs of cards. I went a little nuts though, actually, I have to say. Um, but I don't get to Michael's very often, so I, uh, I let myself splurge. I actually will post a haul of all the stuff I bought fairly soon in case you want to go and see if you can get any of those deals. There were some really fun things. And um, when you buy a big pack like that, you can always split it with friends. So I've split some of my gold paper. I've split some of my card bases. And it's really handy. So now what I'm going to do, it's handy for everybody. 
Um, I'm going to put this wax paper down and then I'm going to put something, I'll put like a card, put like a paper pad on top. That's going to hold those little die cut pieces down while this glue dries because it, it, it dries fairly quickly but um, but still, you want to you want to make sure it's making contact when it dries. And this is the final card, and it's got some nice you know fun um, reflections with the gold, and it's super light and thin to thin to mail because I just used a um, an embossing die for the little buttons. That's a Stampin' Up die, a thin lit by Sizzix, and you know it's all it's just it's just cardstock, so it mails really really inexpensively. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Please check out our sponsor at www.artneco.com. They have some fantastic stamps. This uh, set of uh, 50 states, birds, and flowers is such a beautiful, beautiful set. I love it. It's one I go back to quite frequently, and it's so much fun if you love to color, and coloring is all the rage right now. So thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and until next time, happy crafting!